Hmm. You ever done anything dangerous? In to try to close it on a Tuesday. Alvarez launches deep right field, and this one is gone, and the Astros walk him off in game one. Jeez, that is dangerous. I've done something like that, too. I won't tell anybody. Listen, one time, never mind, that's too dangerous. Anyways. What a game today in the first game of the ALDS as the Mariners end up losing to the Astros 8-7 in heartbreak. Walk-off home run in the bottom of the ninth inning from Jordan Alvarez. The Mariners jumped on the great Justin Verlander early in this game, but unfortunately could not hang on for the win. For a warning, I go on a bit of a rant later on this video just talking about some general frustrations with decisions that were made with managing the bullpen and whatnot. So stick around for that if you want to see it. Um, otherwise, if you're new to the channel, I appreciate you joining, and let's get into the recap. Headed into Tuesday's matchup against the Mariners, Justin Verlander owned a 5-1 record with a 2.34 ERA, a .921 whip, and a 210 opponent's batting average so far this year against the Mariners. He had simply owned the Mariners this year, so it would be very important to jump on him early. Well, top of the first inning, Julio Rodriguez drew a walk from Verlander, after which Ty France singled to Riot, advancing Rodriguez to third base. Suarez was called out on strikes, after which Cal Raleigh was up at the plate. One away, Verlander, and the 1-1, and a line shot, base hit to right. In to score is Rodriguez. On his way to third goes France, and the Mariners strike first here in game one, and it's Cal Raleigh once again. Cal stays hot. The Mariners would end up with one run in the first inning, after which Logan Gilbert, a.k.a. Walter, would come in to pitch. And he's had a solid year against the Astros with a 2 and 2 record, a 252 ERA, and a 1.08 whip. Bottom of the first inning, they went down 1 2 3 with a strikeout. This right here is a strikeout of Jeremy Pena on that dirty curveball. After which, the Mariners began to ramp things up against Verlander. Adam Frazier with a single to right, Jared Kelnick with a single up the middle, which uh, gave him two postseason hits in his career, one ahead of Mike Trout. You know, no big deal. After which, both runners advance on a J.P. Crawford flyout with Hula Rodriguez due up next. Here's a 1-2. In the air right center field. That is deep and that is down. Into the gap it goes. This is going to play two runs and Rodriguez styling his way into second base. It's a two RBI double and the Mariners lead 3-0 in the second inning. And Ty France to follow. Do it again. Another one, two. Back up the middle of the base hit. Rodriguez around third. He'll score easily. And it is an RBI single for Ty France. And look at the Mariners on the road in game one. They lead 4 nothing. Through just the second inning, the Mariners ran up Verlander's pitch count to 49. And the Mariners put more balls in play at 100 plus miles per hour with four than Verlander had at swings and misses at three. The Astros didn't have much going until the bottom of the third inning. Chas McCormick with a single, Martin Maldonado with a strikeout, Jose Altuve walked, Jeremy Pena with a flyout, and next up was Jordan Alvarez. In the air, left field, deep, slicing. Kelnick will turn, this ball's off the wall. It's gonna score two. Alvarez in the second, a two RBI double. When they need a big hit, they get one from Jordan Alvarez. This put the Astros on the board 4-2, and Minute Maid Park has some funky dimensions. Those Crawford boxes are only 315 feet away, but the Mariners also have a Crawford, and his name is JP. Top of the fourth inning with two outs. Delivers, and that one is high and deep to right, and JP Crawford flexes his muscles. That one is way... After homering only six times during the regular season, JP comes up clutch, putting the Mariners up 5-2. And due up next was J-Rod. Like this, a five-gamer. Rodriguez into left center field. That's hit well. That'll split the gap. Rodriguez to second. And he's on his way to third. 
Cut off and relay. No, it's just cut off. No throw to third base. And the rookie's got a triple. A two out triple to go along with his double and a walk. With this triple, Julio Rodriguez became the youngest AL player with a double and a triple in a postseason game, surpassing a name you might have heard of before, Lou Gehrig. Due up next was Ty France. And he sends that one deep to left field. Alvarez is back at the wall. He leaps. Oh, it drops. In and out of his glove. Another run is in. And Jordan was that close to catching it, and he'd get his revenge as he'd throw out Ty France at the plate after a single by A. Eugenio Suarez. After which, in the bottom of the fourth inning, Yuli Gurriel would send a moonshot into the Crawford boxes. Arsenal in his bullpen. Gonna be the worst start of the year. It's Gurriel, but he's gonna watch this one fly. This one not coming back. A booming home run by Yuli Gurriel. Six to three Mariners as Curiel starts the fourth inning with a long ball. Verlander would end up getting pulled after the fourth inning, giving up six earned runs with 10 hits, having just three strikeouts, one walk on 81 pitches. And his next start seems to be lined up for Sunday if that game is needed. The next couple innings would be pretty quiet as Gilbert was replaced by Brash. Gilbert would end up going five and a third innings, giving up five hits, three earned runs, two walks with five Ks. Things were silent until the bottom of the eighth inning. Andres Munoz came in to replace Diego Castillo to face the heart of the Houston lineup. Jeremy Pena lined out to start the inning. Jordan Alvarez then hit an absolute rocket off of Munoz. This ball was hit 113 miles an hour at a 20 degree launch angle. The projected distance was 333 feet and it hit the wall on the fly and it only ended up being a single. Then due up next was Alex Bregman. Balls in a strike. And Bregman sends one deep in the left center field. This is way back, and it is gone. Alex Bregman gets the Astros off the deck. A two-run blast makes it a two-run game. It wasn't Munoz's best appearance, but these Astros hitters are also some of the tops in the league. Munoz would throw 23 pitches this inning, after which he would be replaced in the bottom of the ninth by Paul Seawald. Seawald was coming off of a blow up this last weekend in Toronto, but he got the first batter to ground out. The second batter ended up getting hit by a pitch on a 3-2 count. Seawald then struck out Altuve, after which Jeremy Pena singled up the middle on a slider that was located nearly perfect on the lower outside corner. With two on and two out and lefty Jordan Alvarez coming to the plate, Scott Service decided to make a change. Service decided to go with starter Robbie Ray to try and close out the game hoping that a slider or a sinker could get Alvarez out. Close it on a Tuesday. Alvarez launches deep right field, and this one is gone! And the Astros walk him off in game one! Jordan Alvarez! Are you kidding me? Just absolutely brutal. Before I air my frustrations, Game 2 is set for Thursday at 12.37 p.m. Pacific Time. And Mariners fans, there's still a lot of reason to be hopeful. Luis Castillo is your starter for the second game, and the Astros have not faced him yet this year. It is very promising to see what the Bats did against a great pitcher in Verlander, and let's hope they can keep that up moving forward. And hey, just another reminder, we are guaranteed some Mariner playoff baseball in Seattle this weekend. Hey Scott, let's have a little chat. Andres Munoz is your best relief pitcher. He's probably a top three relief pitcher in the league. He's your best high leverage arm. Why are you throwing him up four runs with no one on base? I understand that you put him in to face the heart of the Houston lineup, but that's not a high leverage situation. So you're basically wasting your best arm. Now we have a guy on first and second, two outs. Jordan Alvarez, one of the best hitters in the league is coming up to the plate. Step one, why do we not just walk him, right? To get to Alex Bregman. Bregman did homer earlier. Bregman is a great hitter, don't get me wrong. Jordan Alvarez is a top three hitter in the league. Two, Jordan Alvarez is batting 321 against lefties. Lefty on lefty does not matter with Jordan Alvarez. He has a better batting average against lefties than he does righties. 
The Mariners made the decision before the game started to not start Robbie Ray in this series for good reason. He's pitched 10 and two thirds innings against the Astros this year, 10.97 ERA, that's 13 earned runs in those innings, 23 hits, six home runs. Why are you bringing him in in the highest leverage situation against the team that crushes him against a batter that mashes lefties? And why are you bringing in starting pitchers to close out games? I understand they're great pitchers, but that's why you have a guy like, I don't know, Munoz to close a game out. That's what he's there for. And when I say Jordan mashes lefties, that home run off of Robbie Ray was 116.7 miles per hour, 22 degree launch angle, 438 foot home run. That was an absolute screamer. Go back to the Seawald decision for pulling Seawald. Okay, you wanna put someone else in to go against Jordan Alvarez, a lefty. Where has Eric Swanson been? He hasn't even pitched in the playoffs yet. This season versus lefties, he's been insane. A 200 batting average against, a strikeout to walk ratio of 14.33 against lefties. That splitter that he uses apparently works great against lefties. There are so many different routes that could have been taken to avoid a meltdown like this. And even going back to the second Toronto game, I don't understand why George Kirby wasn't used in long relief, maybe three or four innings after Robbie Ray went three innings, rather than going straight to the bullpen with Brash, Seawald, Castillo, Festa, Murphy, Munoz, and then using Kirby last as a closer. When Robbie came out of that game after the third inning, the Mariners were down four runs. You wanna stay in the game. Why not use Kirby in a long relief scenario to where he pitches three or four innings? Uh, it was determined that on Sunday, Logan Gilbert would be the starter if there was a game three. So Gilbert's not gonna be starting Sunday. You could go Gilbert and bullpen for game three. Game two, instead, they decide to go Ray and then bring in Brash only for an inning. Seawald, Castillo, Festa, Murphy, Munoz, and then Kirby at the last moment to save the game because we had no one else in our bullpen because we used the entire bullpen. Rather than just using Kirby right after Ray, eat up some innings, four innings call it, and have that bullpen saved for game three if we needed it because it looked like we were gonna need that. But anyway, I'm just a couch GM, so what do I know? Try to keep the good vibes. We'll see you on Thursday for the next game. And if you made it this far, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, give it a share, and we'll see you next time. All right, guys, goodbye zone, and don't forget it. Stop it.